the mainnet BCH network is going to be proof of work. And then the smart contract side, which has to be very complex, very, you know, it's very intensive. A lot, there's a lot going on. We're going to have that side be effectively delegated proof of work, where mm. it's just referencing your hash rate on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain and giving you the ability to validate transactions based on that hash rate. So it's basically replicating the consensus creators, the miners, the blockchain producers, the, the people mining Bitcoin Cash on this parallel network. And it's not doing any extra work other than saying, oh, yeah, you guys were, were miners on Bitcoin Cash. So therefore, you're good to go in terms of being validators on this network. I live unbanked off of cryptocurrency and I use BitRefill extensively because it lets me pay with crypto at places that don't yet accept it directly. This one service more than any other helps me live on crypto, pay your prepaid phone bill, or buy gift cards to thousands of major retailers around the world, all with cryptocurrency, including for exact amounts so you don't have to buy more gift credit than you need for a specific purchase. You can use BitRefill without an account, but if you get an account, you can earn rewards points which translate to savings, and you can also hold a balance denominated in dollars or euros to protect yourself against market crashes. Go to bitrefill.com, click create account, and enter the referral code DCN, or follow the link in the description. So, hey everyone, I have the wonderful and fantastic opportunity to speak with the one and only Mark Lamb, CEO and founder of CoinFlex. How's it going, man? Great. Yeah, going really well. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on to chat. Uh, we have an interesting dis discussion today, which is Smart BCH, which is something built on top of Bitcoin Cash to basically enable smart contracts and stuff like that. But I'd like to build back from like the super boomer perspective of, you know, I kind of wrap my head around Bitcoin and I kind of conceptually know what Ethereum does, but then just completely be lost in everything in between because I think there's a lot of confusion in the space like for example you have um, you know obviously Ethereum being like the standard bearer of this kind of thing but then you have as I, as I mentioned off the air some projects like uh, Bitcoin SV saying that there's no use for these kinds of things you could do it all on chain why do you why don't you just like upload movie files into directly into the blockchain it's just a bunch of other stuff and it just it's confusing at this point. Everyone says, no, 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 we can do it too. All we got is a little, yeah. we just build a little side chain into this. And like, well, why does it like, there's just a lot of confusion is what, I, what all this means. So first off, um, what is your involvement in smart BCH before we get into that? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm the CEO of CoinFlex. CoinFlex mm -hmm. is an exchange. Okay. Uh, we are a few things. We're a spot exchange. We have People trading uh, spot assets against USDC and 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 other pairs, and then we have futures as well, and so that's kind of a leveraged way to trade, and it's a way to uh, you know speculate on the price of something in the future with with more money than you have to to just mm -hmm. buy the spot with. And when with the demand for leverage, you also get um, uh, the ability to provide leverage. So we've created a, a stable coin, Flex USD, mm -hmm. that taps into the funding markets that leverage creates. Mm -hmm. And FlexUSD pays interest on chain every eight hours um, to the holders of FlexUSD, and so that that acts as kind of a way to um, to basically, uh, you know, to create the first interest-bearing stablecoin. You know, Tether and USDC, they take dollars, they, they do things with those dollars, they take risk with those dollars, they lend mm -hmm. out those dollars, but they don't compensate the holders of those dollars with anything. And mm -hmm. so FlexUSD is one of our products. We also have an AMM. It's an automated market maker where you can provide liquidity in any coin. So you can put in BCH, BTC, Bit Ethereum, anything you want, and provide liquidity in our futures markets as if you were a high-frequency trader. So you don't have to um, go to all the work of, of setting up a prop trading firm and setting up a quant trading firm and a hedge fund. You can just do a few clicks and and uh, trade like one, you know, some of the best uh, players in the world and, and just stake your coins and earn a yield on them. And so that's, that's been very popular as a, a yield strategy. And one of our other products um, we have actually as a service, the Bitcoin Cash community is, um, is the bridge. And so that's mm -hmm. basically a bridge between BCH and smart BCH. And so we are actually 
right now the sort of de facto centralized bridge between these two coins. Uh, there is going to be a decentralized bridge, and we're very excited about this. That's probably going to happen um, at some point next year. Um, but in the interim, in order to get Smart BCH off the ground, uh, we sort of stepped in. We were asked by the Smart BCH team to step in and provide this uh, this bridge to, to to the user base. And so, really, what Smart BCH is, and, and CoinFlex's role is is really just in sort of a uh, in a bridge, and and also in the champion. We're we're you know big fans of it. We're we're sort of looking to promote it, looking to. Um, use it where we can. We have Flex USD running on Smart BCH. We have Flex mm -hmm. Coin, which is our exchange token, running on Smart BCH. Um, and so we're we're a large user. We're we're the bridge. We're you know we're the largest BCH exchange in the world. So in terms of BCH futures volume and and spot volume, we we are the biggest. Um, and so generally speaking, we're like very active users and and sort of platforms for these products, these Bitcoin Cash products. But the way we think about smart BCH is really that Ethereum created something truly unique. They created mm -hmm. a smart contract platform. This enables a number of things you can't do on Bitcoin. Transactions that are truly contingent upon each other and have a w wide range of outcomes. Transactions that are contingent on oracles, transactions that are contingent on all these sort of other things and other state changes within yeah. the Ethereum blockchain cannot be done on Bitcoin, cannot be done on Bitcoin Cash. And so that was sort of the starting ground. And what happened is Ethereum ran into a number of scalability issues. Yeah, and it was Smart nasty BCH, fees. Yeah, the fees got really nasty. I remember there was a video um, five years ago or four years ago saying, where Vitalik was saying he was joking about how Bitcoin's five cent fees were going to alienate a bunch of people from using Bitcoin. And I think he was right. And and you look at Ethereum fees now and it's, you know, I was trying to do a Uniswap transaction yesterday and it was going to be $68. Mm -hmm. And I, I just went to, I just went yeah, to a centralized exchange and did it. Yeah. Yeah. $68 I... was, was low. It's sometimes several hundred dollars. So yeah, yeah exactly. where I stand today is I have a few hundred dollars worth of Ethereum and tokens, and it's completely useless to me because yep. I can't do anything to those tokens. I can't if I swapped them all for Ethereum, I would end up like a net loss probably. Yeah, and so I just I literally have to wait because I do, did manage to a few months ago before you know it went down for a few months and went back up get some. Ethereum to on Thorchain providing liquidity. I'm like, oh, that's nice. I don't have to touch it as accruing value for me. But I want to add to that, but I can't because you know I only have about that much on there anyway. And so it, yeah. it is a real problem. Yeah. It's it's a huge problem. And it's such a problem because when you think about finance and the opportunities that decentralized finance are pro providing and creating for people. Really, the opportunity is that in this old world of finance, you have maybe um, 100 prop firms, which prop firms just means uh, proprietary trading firms. So these are trading firms that trade with their own capital. And, and there's probably about 100, maybe a couple hundred that dominate the liquidity of every global financial market, mm -hmm. um, including crypto, by the way. So these are firms that are you know, 10, 20, 100, 200, 1,000 person teams with technology and server stacks. And, and these are what make up most of the liquidity on global financial markets. And the taker side, the, the people that are trading against these people, the people that are buying and selling stocks for their pension funds or their day trading or whatever, you know, they're, they're a large percent as well. But but the prop trading firms are are doing most of the actual providing of liquidity. So they're they're the people sitting there saying, "Hey, I've got, you know, this price to buy, this price to sell. Oh, now it's this price to buy. Now it's this price to sell." And they're moving that. And that's a service. That's a very valuable service. Um, it's it's highly lucrative. It's it's very profitable for these firms. And what you just said, uh, Joel, you you just said that you were staking and mm -hmm. providing your liquidity into mm -hmm. Ethereum on Thorchain and other places. Mm -hmm. And what you're basically doing when you're doing that is you're actually competing with this you know, 
incumbent market of prop trading firms and hedge funds. Yeah. And it, the, the thing that is powerful about DeFi, whether it's Ethereum or ThorChain or SmartBCH uh, or even CoinFlex has this product as well. The thing that's, that I find most powerful about DeFi is that it allows people to stake two assets uh, or stake a combination of assets or stake one asset and provide liquidity in a financial market that is 24-7, 365 and open to anyone in the world. Mm -hmm. Anyone can trade on on these platforms now, provided you you have the money to pay the fees. Of course. Uh, so that's, I think, why we're here today talking about smart PCH. But the the base concept was revolutionary and is revolutionary. Um, and so that, you know, that is what's so cool. You know, I, I imagine you don't have uh, 10 staff working for you when you provide that liquidity on ThorChain. It might be nope. just a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. And so... And so this is the cool thing about sort of what's being created here is this tail of liquidity that can come from the people putting in a couple hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, a couple hundred thousand dollars, this tail of liquidity that can come from the rest of us, so to speak, the mm -hmm. people that are not these full-time trading firms is enormous. And mm -hmm. so if, if, if DeFi succeeds, it's actually going to make crypto markets more liquid than financial markets, than traditional financial markets. And that's amazing, but that's also only going to be enabled by some platform that is very, very low fee. Because in order to get that tail end, you have to have people who can actually afford to test. Because the guy that puts mm. in 10,000 or or 100,000, he needs to he needs to try it out with 100. He needs mm. to try it out with 500. And if you, if you charge him a $50 fee, he's not going to do that. So mm. that's, I think, what's so interesting about Smart BCH. Well, then let's just go right into it and just say, what the hell is Smart BCH? Yeah, so Smart BCH is basically, the, the concept behind Smart BCH is that you can get about 100 times um, scalability improvement in, Ethere in what Ethereum does through what's called parallel hard, parallelized hardware optimizations. Mm. So Ethereum is actually single threaded. What this mm. means is basically only one thing can happen at a time and everything is serial. So A, then B, then C, then D. Um, and Smart BCH basically said, we can create something that's multi-threaded. We can create a smart contract processing engine so it, it's a blockchain, you know, it's a blockchain that processes smart contracts. Yeah. But instead of doing things in a single threaded way like Ethereum, we're going to do things multi threaded and take advantage of the fact that computer hardware these days is extremely parallel. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the direction of computer hardware development and computer hardware advancement, it's actually, it hasn't been, um, you know, making the chips you know, vastly more capable. A lot of a lot of the advancements have actually been in in, in taking advantage of, of hardware parallelization. And so this is sort of the core advantage of smart BCH. And then beyond that, you have this concept where um, in Ethereum, it's it's proof of work on the smart contract side. Mm -hmm. So in, in Ethereum, you, you kind of say, okay, we're going to do proof of work and produce these very, very complex transactions. Um, in Bitcoin Cash, you have this idea of, well, the mainnet BCH network is going to be proof of work. Mm -hmm. And then the smart contract side, which has to be very complex, very, you know, it's very intensive, a lot, there's a lot going on. We're going to have that side be effectively delegated proof of work, where mm -hmm. it's just referencing your hash rate on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain and giving you the ability to validate transactions based on that hash rate. So it's basically replicating the, the consensus creators, the miners, the blockchain producers, the, the people mining Bitcoin Cash on this parallel network. And it's not doing any extra work other than saying, oh yeah, you guys were, were miners on Bitcoin Cash, so therefore you're good to go in terms of being validators on this network. And when you do that, you remove a lot of the complexity in um, basically validating blocks and you allow the miners 
to do their proof of work mining, and then also to get this privilege of validating um, smart BCH transactions. And that privilege kind of comes with some work. You know, they have to mm-hmm. actually, you know, validate this these kind of complex smart contracts. But it makes it for it makes for a much more scalable system because you effectively compartmentalize the two chains where BCH go- does what it's good at, which is super decentralized consensus proof of work. And then smart BCH does what it's good at, which is Ethereum, but a hundred times more scalable. And so what I mean by Ethereum is it is a carbon clone. It's, it's called EVM. So EVM mm-hmm. stands for the Ethereum virtual machine. And yeah. this is kind of like a common language. So if you think about English, mm-hmm. um, English is so successful because everyone speaks it. There's a network effect there where if I go to lots of different countries around the world, I can speak English because because Britain basically colonized the world. But but and 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 as a result, it's kind of very extensible. You know, it's changed and been ad- and adapted and, and transformed in a bunch of different countries. Um, if you think about the language network effects, they're true in programming as well. So you have a lot of mm-hmm. common languages, you know, HTML, uh, JavaScript, Java, C++, et cetera. And these languages are very sticky. They, they last for decades and decades and decades. And, and they s- stay dominant. You know, the dominant language, programming languages today are probably going to be the dominant programming languages in 10 years' time. They'll have changed a bit, but they'll still be the same language. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's the tr- that's the case with smart contract networks, where in crypto, you know, if you're building on Ethereum and if you're building on a th- on Ethereum compatible code base, which is EVM compatible code base, yeah. um, you're really building on the biggest and best network of smart contracts in the world, and that that um, that is effectively. Uh, giving you the ability to tap into all this open source code that's already there, that's already working, that's been tested and audited by some of the smartest people in crypto, that's been used on Ethereum to the tune of billions and billions of dollars. And so it has this security and and wealth of knowledge and wealth of open source in it that you can just tap right into. And that's what's cool about smart BCH is it just automatically taps into it and then people can build without having to learn an entirely new system. Yeah. And so basically it'd be like solidity, like the way Ethereum's kind of. Yeah. Made. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it is, it is solidity. I should have, uh, mm-hmm. I should have referenced that as well, but it, it is solidity. And so the difference is the validating chain, the validating network. It doesn't work in the old slow proof of work kind of way. It works in something different. Is it, is it like tender mint or is it something like that? Um, yeah, in in, in mm-hmm. fact, yes, uh, it is using Tendermint. So, uh, do, you, do you know Tendermint what else uses is... Tendermint? Because I've only come, uh, kind of like this, only come through my radar through like a few different <laughs> things lately. But apparently, a lot of projects use that. Do you know any any others that do? Uh, yes. So I believe Binance Smart Chain is using Tendermint. Um, mm-hmm. Kava is, I think, the sort of the pioneer of Tendermint. I'm not sure. It might have been Cosmos. Mm-hmm. Um, but Cosmos, Kava, and I think BSC are all using Tendermint for their consensus um, network. And uh, I'm not an expert by any means, so the people on the, the good people of the internet will probably prove me wrong. But Tendermint is effectively like a round robin consensus mechanism mm-hmm. where it effectively um, helps you get consensus with a, with sort of a a group of validators uh, validating mm-hmm. transactions. And so, yeah, it, it uses Tendermint. And Tendermint is one of the things that makes it more efficient. It's not mm-hmm. the core thing. The core thing is something that SmartBCH invented itself, which is this kind of parallelized um, execution platform for executing uh, you know, the, the EVM contracts. And, okay. and that was one of the things that was interesting about SmartBCH when I started looking at the team and the coding is there was this relentless drive to innovate while also relentlessly driving to be a perfect clone of Ethereum from a compatibility perspective. Hmm. And and these are these are not easy. It's very easy to build something completely new with no regard for existing standards and existing 
um, specs and existing you know, compatibilities. And it's also very easy to build a complete clone with zero innovations. What Smart BCH did is they said, no, the best thing is going to be something that's totally compatible with Ethereum, but is at the end of the day, a drastically more scalable solution to the question of how to run smart contracts on a blockchain. And that, that is just mind blowing. You know, it's, it's, it's an, un, it's a, it's a very business savvy kind of technical acumen that comes to this conclusion of we have to be uh, fully compatible while also innovating at the core architectural level. And, and that was just like, wow, very attractive. Yeah. So this parallelization approach, none, none of these other big blockchain projects are using something like that, right? Like a Solana or something like that. None of the ones that I'm uh, familiar with. So there, mm. there are a lot of blockchains, Solana being one of them that take the approach of let's just be super centralized. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and there are advantages. I mean, you know, if you think about, um, Amazon.com, Google.com, right? These, there's a lot of uh, very centralized services that are very, very high performance. Um, the issue you have anytime you have a block, blocks, block uh, time mm -hmm. that's less than one second is you run into speed of light issues where mm -hmm. the, speed, the speed of light, the speed that data can travel around the world is never going to be faster than the speed of light. And the speed of light you know, if you're going on a fiber optic network between two data point, two, two points on the world, you're never going to get much faster than a couple hundred milliseconds. Mm. Uh, so that's about, you know, a third of a second, let's call it. Um, well, anytime you're going for a blockchain with sub one second block times, Solana being mm. about uh, half of a second or less than half of a second, you're going to have extreme centralization. And it's not a problem that can be fixed later on unless you change that design decision where mm. you decide to no longer be sub sub one second block times. Mm. So that is sort of a design decision that Solana's made. Um, they might they might change that in the future if they decide that decentralization um, matters. But uh, to the extent that you know people are using it today, it is it is a naturally centralized blockchain. Yeah, well, that makes sense. And so Smart BCH is almost like an entirely new blockchain project. It's just kind of linked to the old, as one would, the old school Bitcoin Cash as a way of uh, basically, as a way of being like an anti sybil mechanism. Is that kind yes. of correct? Yes, that, that, I think that's a, that's, that's a great way to put it. Um, mm. And I'm going to use that now when I talk mm. to people about it. Um, it is, it is exactly doing that. It's using Bitcoin Cash as an anti-civil mechanism. So let's just say I want to be one of these, these smart BCH nodes. What do I have to do in order to start one up? Well, anyone can run a validating node. So if you mm -hmm. want to just validate transactions and, and relay them, same as you know a, a BCH uh, node, node operator would, you can mm -hmm. just boot one up and, and have at it. Uh, you don't need any special permissions or anything like that. But if yeah. you want to, if you want to be actually um, a validating node that is is validating new blocks, um, you have to basically be a miner. Um, mm -hmm. th there, there's a there's effectively an election every two weeks where mm -hmm. miners can be signaling with their hash power. There's they can be signaling for a new validator to come into existence or a new validator to start validating transactions. And um, anytime they're signaling, they're basically saying, you know, let's say I have 5% of the network. I, I think 5% of the validation should be done by myself mm -hmm. or by someone else that, that might not be me. Um, the logical thing is to vote for yourself, but you can, you can vote for anyone. And, so then a new validator comes into existence and has 5% of the validation rights. And so that's, that's effectively how it works. It's kind of a simple process. Every two weeks, you know, the, the voting is, has, has occurred and, and kind of the, the control of the network changes by a few percent here and there. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I'm really into the system. 
Yeah, and so a mining pool would have to actively participate in this, right? Like they'd have to actually Correct. point that out. And there could just be one that's like, man, we're going to sit this one out. We don't care. And then they don't participate. So let's just say you have 30%. Let's just do an argument's sake, right? You have 30% of all Bitcoin Cash's hash rate is actively participating in this voting process, delegation process. But the other 70% isn't participating at all. So how does that yeah. end up working out? Well, so there is an incentive to participate, which is mm -hmm. you earn half of the BCH fees on, on the network. Mm -hmm. So like right now, um, those fees on Ethereum are $50 million today. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what happens to those fees on smart BCH is half of them go to the, my, to the validators mm -hmm. um, and the other half are burned. So the other half are effectively going to everyone that holds BCH, even on mainnet. Uh, via the process of just burning the BCH, mm -hmm. and um, and this is pretty cool. The 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 burning is a is a solid economic component, and the half going to miners is a solid incentive for people to run validators. You know, there's yeah, there's an miners have an incentive to run validators anyway because any miner of of BTC or BCH is long SHA two fifty six coins in the future. They're of course they're they've they've made an investment that pays out if BTC or BCH go up in value, really the sum of BCH, BTC and BSV mm -hmm. going up in value is what they want. They don't care which one. Um, and so if you're a miner, you are incentivized just by owning mining equipment for BCH for smart BCH to work out. Um, but you're also incentivized with the fees and the fees are, are pretty great as well. And they're, yeah. they're, they're so not a lot the today, fees but it's the in like what is what actually so the fees token? are only BCH. So the B, mm, the fees are all paid in BCH. And and that's obviously a super important principle. So when you talk about the burning then, does that mean that now Bitcoin Cash's total eventual supply is going down over time? Correct. Yeah. So mm. um there's been 70 BCH that have been burned so far. Um and I think uh if this thing takes off, let's say it took off to the mm -hmm. level of Ethereum and we got to tens of millions of dollars a day in fees. Mm -hmm. um, again, half of those would go to miners and half of those would go to burn BCH. And so that would create a, a pretty tremendous burn pressure on BCH. And you could even see a negative inflation rate where right now we sort of have the number of BCH increasing and increasing and increasing until we get to the year 2140. Mm -hmm. um, but what we could see happen is that number starting to decrease every year rather than increase every year. Yeah. So eventually the supply is supposed to be capped at 21 million, but if there's enough success, let's say this is like a big blockbuster thing. Do you ever wonder about running out of coins? Cause there's no new coins created after a certain point. It like unlike Ethereum, which I guess has infinite inflation right now, but the burning can potentially out outdo the inflation. But like at some point, happenings happen, Bitcoin Cash runs out, and then you just burn all of it running these things. I mean, obviously it's a little bit of a, a extreme or a silly example, but what would happen in that situation? In that situation, I'll be the last one holding BCH, and I'll just I'll just own all of it. <laughs> um, no, I'm 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 joking, of course, but mm -hmm. but there will be people if 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 that starts to get starts to happen, there will be people um, like me that say, oh wow, I should uh I should I, I I I'm you know I'm benefiting a lot from holding this thing. The, the rest mm -hmm. of the people are are uh, letting it get burnt and mm -hmm. and and spending it in fees, and so. Lots of people, I think, will be holding BCH, um, will not be spending it, and 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 you know even if if the price creeps up by you know ten times, twenty times, a hundred times, you know they're they're just going to be sort of sitting on it, benefiting from the fact that uh, the whole world is running out of BCH. So mm -hmm. um, that I think that's a that's sort of a dream come true scenario. Um, and we're all hoping that that happens. And 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 if and if the usage of this network really gets to big scale, um, that is what's going to happen. You, so a, a good friend of mine said to me the other day. He said, "The moment where you can celebrate uh, lots of burning 
for example, the burning on Ethereum yeah. is when you have low fees, when you have very low fees and you still have a high amount of burning, that's when you can celebrate. Mm -hmm. And so right now we have on, on smart BCH, we have low fees, which is great. It should be celebrated. You know, you can do transactions for less than a dollar in fees, but even sometimes a cent in fees on smart BCH. Mm -hmm. Um, and the devs are working actively to make sure that that, that scales throughout. So that's, that's super important. But the other thing is once we have high adoption, we'll have low fees and a high amount of coins being burnt. And mm -hmm. that's, that's sort of the true, you know, dream case scenario where there's lots of deflationary pressure on BCH, but there's also a platform that scales for the whole world to use Bitcoin cash as cash, as money, as, mm -hmm. as a smart contracting platform, as, as a financial system, as an alternative to, uh, the banking system where it's very difficult for people to compete on a level playing field. So, you know, these are the sorts of things that, you know, we all got into Bitcoin originally for, and we all got into Ethereum originally for, and we all got into all these blockchains for, and we all sort of are obsessed with crypto for these reasons. And it's now sort of coming to fruition where the market is starting to say, oh yeah, this is actually a, a powerful network we can build mm -hmm. DeFi applications on. Yeah, and so to sort of wrap that around the way the the two networks, because you know it's Smart BCH and BCH interoperate, right? If I have, I need some Bitcoin Cash for gas to do transactions, right? So let's just say yeah. I have some in my wallet. I do things like say DeFi, whatever, uh, and it goes on the Smart BCH you know, tendermint chain and it just, but then the actual fees themselves get included on the Bitcoin cash blockchain in terms of, you know, transactions and some to the burn, some to the burn address, some to miners. Yep. Now, how obviously it's, it's not like a, is as far as like timing is concerned, it's not like a one for one type of a thing. Otherwise, you know, the entire Bitcoin cash network would be overloaded, but like how, how many on chain transactions does, smart BCH produce relative to how many on the smart PGA BCH chain get happen. So, Oh yeah. Mostly it's producing transactions on the smart BCH blockchain. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't produce that many on mainnet chain transactions mm -hmm. other than the people that are locking up their BCH to, to have it issued on, on smart BCH. So mm -hmm. it's really, um, those locking and unlocking transactions are transactions mm -hmm. on mainnet. Um, the burn transactions are transactions on mainnet. And yeah. other than that, nothing, basically. And so how often do these burn transactions take place? Like if I'm doing if I'm doing if like ten DeFi trades a day or something, let's just say. And yeah. would that well those get burned, so those get burned every transaction mm -hmm. um on the smart BCH network. On the mm -hmm. on the main BCH network, uh, the bridge, which right now is, is yeah. us, has to has to burn those, and we're probably looking to do that once a month. But mm -hmm. on the smart BCH transaction network, it's literally every every transaction, every transaction you're burning small, small, small amounts of BCH. Yeah, and it just hits the main Bitcoin Cash blockchain like every month whenever you guys kind of settle exactly. it up, reconcile. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And so, uh, obviously. So uh, that makes sense wrapping the head around so far. And so basically the way to put BCH into the smart BCH world is kind of to let you guys do it. And then now I'm in the matrix, so to speak, right? Because you said it's like you're, you're the bridge right now. So what is the bridge? What is your role as the bridge entail currently? Yeah, so it's it's a it's an intentionally very simple role. Mm -hmm. And so... We take BCH, we put it on an address that is public, the whole world can see, and we then we then uh, release or unlock BCH on the smart BCH network. And this mm -hmm. is 24-7 auditable um, in real time. Everyone can see it. And the way this is done is it's it's always custodied in a multi-sig uh, you know, transaction system, which is offline. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's multi-sig, meaning there's multiple signatories that have to sign off. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an offline transaction system, so it's not connected to the internet. 
And it's completely public and completely transparent. So you can check the CoinFlex um, address that the coins are sent to. Mm -hmm. And you can check that against the supply of smart BCH on the Bitcoin Cash network. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you can just see that they match up. And so it's a very simple job. You give us BCH, we give you smart BCH. You give us smart BCH, BCH, we give you BCH. Um, it's, uh, you, you can just deposit them and withdraw them from mm -hmm. CoinFlex uh, very, very simply. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's nothing special, basically. And intentionally so. It, it has mm -hmm. to be um, extremely simple so that, the, so that the public can trust us. They don't, they don't feel like you know, something confusing is going on. Yeah, and so basically, it's almost like a token exchange kind of a thing. But once I get smart BCH, I don't need you anymore until I want to go back the other way, right? C correct, correct. And and there are now other bridges that are piggybacking off of our liquidity, uh, like Wagon dot mm. Cash, I think, and 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 some others, and and some people are using those, and and you don't have to have an account on them, and you can you can. Uh, you might pay lower fees by using them and, and there's all sorts of benefits. And so, um, uh, you know, we're, we're not looking to be the only one. We're not looking to monopolize this space. Um, we charge no fees on it. So, mm -hmm. you know, there is that, but, but generally speaking, we are looking just to grow the space and there will be a decentralized bridge at some point, but until mm -hmm. that is the case, we're happy to provide this service. Uh, interesting. So yeah, it's like an interim step while the, like the full, yeah, kind of decentralized bridge gets figured out. Exactly, exactly. We don't want, um, we don't want to be doing this forever because we want Bitcoin Cash to scale to the whole world and there will always be people we can't service. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, we want it to be permissionless where you don't have to trust anyone. But mm -hmm. in the interim, when when the BCH, when the smart BCH team, the develop, develop, for development team came to us and said, look, um, we can wait for a de uh, us to build a decentralized bridge and it's going to take months and months and months for us to get smart bch live or we can go live with you guys we said absolutely let's uh you know being live and in the market and and seeing the market test out this stuff and 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 seeing millions and tens of millions of dollars in in tvl which is kind of total locked value accumulate mm -hmm. to this this network and hopefully that scales to billions in the next few few months um you know that was very important to us and that was sort of uh critical and so we, we wanted to make sure that happened as soon as possible yeah so what kinds of things can you do on smart bch today there's just like say taking a like a random non-technical user but still a crypto user who's like ooh, i want to get on this stuff like what do, what can i do i assume there's like a an exchange of some sort like a DeFi main exchange i assume there's some liquidity like what, what other kinds of, what kind of stuff can I do? Yeah. So I'll give some shout outs. There is, um, Ben swap, which is, mm -hmm. which is one of the main dexes, um, mist swap. There's tango swap that's starting mm -hmm. up and, and I'm very excited about that one. Those, those are, uh, non anonymous founders. Um, mm -hmm. the other ones are two founders that have had a pretty high amount of credibility in the space as well. So obviously, um, you know, uh, kind of verify and look at the audits and look at everything that's going on, to, you know, don't just blindly trust, but, um, there, there are these, uh, you know, these, these DEXs that have, uh, have liquidity. Um, I think in aggregate, they have, uh, tens of millions of dollars of liquidity. Mm -hmm. And so that, that is getting built out. And then there, there is soon going to be, I think a lending platform in smart PCH which will actually be on Mist. So, so Mist mm. Swap um, is is going to be launching a lending platform, and I'm really excited about that because obviously, um, uh, just simply exchanging things is is extremely important. But lending mm. is is important too. Being able to borrow, being able to do flash loans, that's an important component of Ethereum DeFi um, that makes markets more efficient and and robust. And so, there's a lot of things that are really, I think. Um, for the first probably six months or for the next six months of smart bch's uh evolution we probably can copy a lot of the success, most successful stuff on ethereum and see success see commercial success see revenues and, and volumes and market caps of these tokens grow 
simply because the fees are so much lower. So it's kind of like uh, Kui Wang, the developer of Smart VCH, um, and and obviously Satoshi, and obviously everyone involved in this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like their gift to the world, right? They've given us this gift of of this great blockchain, and we can just make money from the fact that it has lower fees uh, than Ethereum. So hopefully that continues. But but obviously we need innovation too. But I think um, you know th there's a lot of gains to be had simply from copying. Yeah, and so uh, for people who are, and I'm going to go into some serious like boomer territory by <laughs> phrasing it in kind of this way, you know. So bear with me. But people want to do stuff on Ethereum. They can, but it's just slow. It's ex expensive, mostly because it's slow and inefficient because of the way the, the main chain works. And so yeah. what they do is they look to ethereum competitors which is like the ethereum killer has been like the meme of the last five years or so right has been like everyone's yeah. the next ethereum killer whatever and it seems like from my basic understanding that binance smart chain is the number one other ethereum so to speak is in it yeah. seems like they just kind of copied it and it it kind of like i hate to use the the made in china kind of thing but it's like the cheap knockoff that's <laughs> You know, it's it's cheap. Like you can, everyone can kind of use it, but it's you kind of don't trust it as much because you know it's probably just CZ running a bunch of nodes or however it works. <laughs> and so, basically, what Smart BCH is like, it's it's like let's just say a Binance Smart Chain with some improvements. Obviously, you talk about the parallelization, except its foundation of who can run a node or whatever is the decentralized Bitcoin cash blockchain or hash rate. Yeah. And then the money, yeah. the token, instead of a native, you know, BSC to a Binance Smart Chain token, Bitcoin cash, which is used for a lot of other stuff, is the main token. And so far, the only like, I guess, weak point there is just the bridge right now is like a couple of, uh, a couple of centralized entities, but that's just in the interim until you can create a truly decentralized bridge. Is that kind of like a good overview of what it is? It's a great overview, actually. Uh, that that everything you said is is a hundred percent spot on. Um, that's like a, a a great way to explain smart BCH. Um, and yeah, the the I think the most important thing is it's it's decentralized from a validation perspective today, but it's also one of the only projects that you know in 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 a year, two years, three years time, if the if the usage grew by ten thousand times. It would still be able to be highly decentralized, very, very mm -hmm. decentralized, more so than many other so-called Ethereum killers. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm excited about it. I think decentralization is valuable, and low fees are valuable, and smart contracts are valuable. And if you like all three of those things, there's not a lot of options for you. And and this might be the only one. If and it's definitely the best one. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and so when we're talking about this the the bridge the decentralizing the bridge thing i mean obviously it's not done yet because you know awesome things take time to build uh how sure is it of the thing is it like well we definitely know how we're gonna do it we just have to finish building it or is it a well we think we know some ways but you know there's a possibility we could never figure out how to do it the right way and then we'd have to be reliant on these and you know, like companies forever yeah, I'm 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 pretty sure it's it's very doable. I've looked at a few of the different approaches, and um, one of them requires a a BCH network approach up, update, mm -hmm. um, which I I believe is scheduled for uh, a May. Um, and so, but I'm 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 pretty sure it's it's doable. Um, mm -hmm. There's some pretty 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 smart and interesting ways to achieve it, and I'm I'm very confident that it will be achieved. Yeah, and so if I were to sort of like wrap up the general value proposition, like a like a, a sales pitch more or less, it's you want to do Ethereum stuff, but Ethereum's too expensive, and all the Ethereum knockoffs slash competitors that can scale a lot better are all kind of centralized garbage. I mean, again, my words, not yours. I'm just being, you know. Uh, so you can do it with us, and you don't have to. You don't have to use a different weird token you can use a token that's already been used for other other important things and you don't have to worry about like five validators that are run by five people or who all know each other kind of running everything and the government shutting them down exactly exactly 
Absolutely. That's correct. Yeah. Well, that's pretty, uh, pretty interesting stuff. I think, uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, a use case for that. Right now, it seems to be eh, Ethereum is decentralized enough, but it's too expensive. And everything else is like, well, we haven't seen it been shut down yet. So we'll just, just see what's going on. <laughs> And so yeah. it, it might be a couple of years before the value of something like this that's harder to shut down is is kind of become apparent. But yeah, I mean, it's still interesting on the space. So where can people find out more about uh, Smart BCH, including how to get started as an actual like, user? Yeah, so the best way to go to, to find out about this stuff is go, to go to the Smart BCH Telegram chat. And so that's uh, smart BCH underscore community mm -hmm. um, on Telegram. That's sort of the uh, Telegram link. You can also go to smartbch.org. You can follow smart BCH on Twitter. There's a Discord, um, which you can find the links to on on either Twitter or the website. And um, yeah, like like the you know the, it's very easy just to pop in the tel Telegram and then just to start ask qu asking questions about where to go. Um, there's a lot of smart people and, and it's sort of well moderated and, and, and people will show you, show you around, show you the right way to, to, uh, to figure things out. But, mm -hmm. but the good thing as well is it's very easy to actually figure out. So, um, there is this website called, uh, chainlist.org. Um, mm -hmm. if you're using MetaMask, you can just go to chainlist.org, um, type in smart BCH at the top, you'll see a, um, uh, you'll see it a chain with chain ID a thousand. And if you just, um, if you just press the connect wallet on, on that section, mm -hmm. um, you will be automatically connected to the right network and you'll be able to start interacting with smart BCH DeFi. So you can go to these websites, you can go to the telegram, but if you want to just jump right into some of the DEXs and jump right into, uh, you know, connecting to things, you can literally just go to chainless.org get connected to the network automatically without having to configure anything and then you're up and running. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty great. All right. Fantastic. Well, what about yourself? Where can people find follow you and your work? Yeah. So you can follow me on Twitter at, uh, at Mark David lamb, um, mm -hmm. M A R K D A V I D L A M B. Uh, you can follow CoinFlex on Twitter at coinflex.com D O T C O M. Uh, and then we're also on Telegram as well, Coinflex underscore en. Um, so that's our that's our community Telegram. And then obviously the website Coinflex.com. So any of those ways are great way to great ways to get in touch with us. Um, I'm also Mark David Lamb on Telegram. So mm -hmm. feel free to reach out to me there, uh, Twitter, um, the website, and and the Telegram. So thanks so All much. Right. Well, thanks. Thanks for being on, and thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you have a good one.